And I want to move to the coronavirus. And there are links here. I mean, you have these crises, not only in Syria, but around the world, um, where people need to flee. And then you have countries closing their border for all sorts of reasons. But, of course, coronavirus is going to contribute to that. I wanted to turn to the issue of the coronavirus and ask you about what's happening here um, in the United States. Uh, New York officials say they're preparing their own test kits after kits distributed by the Centers for Disease Control fa failed validation tests. New cases of coronavirus continue to spring up worldwide. Nigeria is now reporting its first case. Iran's vice president testing positive, and he was next to the president. And I believe Iran has uh, canceled prayer for the first time in, like, 40 years. And at the Vatican, Pope Francis canceled a planned mass after he became ill from an unknown ailment, raising jitters in Italy, where 17 people have died of coronavirus. He had been speaking about it and, you know, offering comfort to those who are suffering. How is your organization, MSF, Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, dealing with this? We work in uh, 70 countries, uh, operations, medical operations, projects. Those are the ones that we're focused on right now to get them ready. We have the case in Nigeria. You can imagine there are many more cases. The testing capacity in the U.S., let alone in a low-income or uh, country or a fragile state, uh, is, is extremely limiting. So we don't know where coronavirus really is, and that's one of the things that's really concerning us, because we know that those those countries, their health systems are already fragile, already under-resourced. And so what we're trying to do is reinforce their capacity. We do have a team that's doing um, public health information, infection control, uh, education, uh, working out of Hong Kong, focusing also on those marginalized, vulnerable minority groups. There are little areas that you will always find who are forgotten in these outbreaks, where they're not part of the dominant group, the messages go out in the main language of the country, and they forget about everyone else who speaks other languages. So that's our focus. It, the prevention is going to be big. We also have a lot of concerns, though, about the development we, of these testing kits. We need cheap, available, quick, you know, these rapid diagnostic kits to be available in the places where we work. Because you can imagine if coronavirus uh, starts to uh, infiltrate maybe uh, one of these refugee camps uh, or, uh, you know, an area with a lot of internally displaced people living in crowded conditions in a stadium or in a school. We work in those kind of places providing health care. We're looking for the vaccination also. This vaccination, this vaccine should be affordable. Uh, there's a lot of public money going into this effort. Uh, a lot of global health experts are contributing to this effort. Uh, the, the profit motive of the R&D uh, in the big pharmaceutical sector has to take into consideration that this is public money uh, going into the development of a vaccine for coronavirus. And we would like to see the price be uh, affordable so that those low-income countries, those countries at war, countries that, that don't don't have the means can afford to, to get access to it.